Hello, Internet. My name is Quinn, and this is Blondie Hacks. So today we're starting a cool new project. I've got a bench grinder with a tool rest that I don't like very much, and we're going to see what we can do about that. Now, if you like my content, uh, go ahead and subscribe both here and on Patreon, and uh, you'll help me keep making more of this content. Okay, let's dive in. Okay, so let's take a look at the problem that we're trying to solve. Uh, this is my Delta 8-inch bench grinder, and uh, it's, it's a very nice grinder in general. I like it. Uh, and one of the reasons that I chose it is because it has this angle adjustable rest on it. And I thought this would be really useful for grinding tool bits uh, for the lathe or for fly cutters or for a shaper or whatever else you might have that needs tool bits. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, the design of this tool rest is really, really janky. So uh, you can see that it's, it's kind of poorly made. Uh, the top surface here is not machined and it's not very big. And it's been powder coated, so it's got this rough finish on it, so it's hard to slide bits around on it when you're grinding them. And uh, you can see I've actually worn most of the powder coat off from, from grinding tool bits on it, but uh, so it does, it does sort of work. But um, and then the other big problem with it is that the angle adjustable part of it is it's got this toothed wheel business in it. And these teeth are really, really coarse uh, adjustment. And so like I want to be able to set it at 10 degrees, for example, so that I can grind, you know, the back rake on a, on a tool bit for, for steel. But you can't do that because these increments are too large. And so you end up either square or like this. And uh, you can't do nice, fine adjustments on it. So this thing is really annoying. Uh, and then uh, it does have this in-out adjustment, which is, you know, which is nice uh, in and of itself. But the problem with this guy is that the mounting bolt for it goes all the way through the cover. So what that means is to change the wheels, you have to take the entire tool rest apart. So you have to take this guy off. It's got a bunch of fiddly little hardware here. There's lock washers and flat washers. And you get, well, see, I dropped the parts. You gotta take all these little bits out. And then there's the carriage bolt here. And, and then you t uh, these other two screws. So you get, it's this whole big process of dismantling the whole thing to change the wheel, which you know, I change wheels pretty often when I want to, you know, throw the buffing wheel on there or change grid or whatever. So uh, this is super annoying. So uh, I want something that's smoothly angle adjustable and I'd like it to be height adjustable as well because I often put fixtures on the grinder and they end up too high because the plate is fixed at the center line. Um, and uh, I want it to be, you know, easily removable and not interfere with uh, changing the wheels. So let's see what we can do about that. Here's the design I came up with in Fusion 360, and uh, my goals here were to make something that was adjustable in all three dimensions, uh, particularly uh, height, which the old one was not. Uh, the idea is I want to be able to move this guy uh, relative to the center line of the wheel so that I can set fixtures and things on top of, uh, of the rest if I want. And uh, it's got uh, a miter slot here for uh, jigs and things that might need to move on there. And uh, the pivot point is set to be uh, the front edge of the grinder wheel so that when this guy is angled, uh, it will uh, make uh, nice clean angles on things that I'm grinding. And of course, I maintain the factory uh, in-out adjustment there. And uh, yeah, all told, I think uh, this should be nice and uh, rigid and nice and adjustable. Uh, there's a lot of parts here to make. It's a pretty complex design. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's get going. So we start at the junk pile with some eighth inch steel plate that's going to form most of the major brackets. And uh, we're going to start by making this piece shown here in yellow. This is kind of the main support bracket that reuses the factory mounts. And uh, what I did is I printed out my, my mechanical drawing from Fusion 360 on some paper. And uh, just using some uh, Super 77 spray glue, I glue it onto the steel scrap. And because this is kind of an odd shaped part, this is a, a really easy way to get the uh, exact outline of it rough cut out on the bandsaw. And uh, I'm using uh, one of these, you know, cheap four by six uh, horizontal bandsaws that we all have. And uh, it does have this vertical option with this really crappy table uh, that I don't recommend, but uh, in a pinch like this, it does, uh, does actually get the job done. And one thing to watch with these things is that small pieces can uh, drop down into that uh, little uh, space beside the blade and jam it up and kick the blade off of the wheels. And uh, it's not very dangerous, but it is alarming. And uh, you have to be quick on the off switch to, uh, to keep from breaking the blade when that happens. So uh, definitely keep those little parts clear of the blade. 
Okay, now we're going to round out the profile with some files. So starting with uh, the, the double cut uh, bastard file for the uh, course work there, just getting the shape. And notice the technique here, I'm actually dropping the handle on each stroke and, and uh, to, to basically form the reverse curve with the file that you want to end up on the part. That's a, a much easier way to get a nice curve when filing by hand. And then we clean up with a, a, a single cut mill file for, to get a nice surface finish on there. And then a razor blade scrapes off the worst of the paper because that's going, the paper is going to prevent uh, the next phase. And then to dissolve the glue on there, we soak it with WD 40, which is an excellent solvent for adhesives. And after that sits for a minute, we can scrub off the, uh, the worst of it with a steel brush. And then just a quick wipe with a rag, and it's good as new. Look at that. Never know there was a sticker on it. All right, over to the mill now so we can cut the, the holes and the slots that are needed for the mounting hardware on this plate. So I'll set up my parallels here and stick our plate in there. And tap it in so it's seated firmly on the parallels. And because this thing is a weird shape, uh, I'm edge finding on the vice jaw on one side and then the part on the other. And then as you can see there, it ends up perfectly zeroed on the corner where the corner would be if it wasn't rounded over, which is just what I want because on my drawing, all the positions are referenced from that corner. And then to cut out the long slots that uh, uh, allow me to reuse the factory mounting uh, positions, I'm hogging out the most of the material by drilling a series of holes. So I center drilled each hole on, I think these were 100 thou increments, uh, and then I come back and I drill them out uh, with a drill smaller than the final size. This slot is actually for an M4 screw, so these are uh, just drilled out uh, maybe five, five ten thousandths uh, smaller than that. And this is a little tedious, but it'll save us a ton of time on milling later. Now I don't actually have an end mill that uh, would be suited for an M4 slot, so instead I'm using a, a smaller end mill and uh, I'm running around the bottom edge and then around the top edge. And so you end up with a slot that has sort of, it's more of a rounded rectangle when you're done rather than having round ends, but uh, that's just fine. And because we did all that drilling, I can mill this eighth inch steel plate with uh, a single pass on my little mill here because the drill has done all the hard work for us. Normally I wouldn't be able to do 125 thou pass and steal it, but thanks to the drilling, it's no problem. This is a four flute end mill here. All right, that looks suspiciously like a slot. You can see how it's got kind of that rounded rectangle look to it. And repeat for the other one and we're going to be all set with the slots. Now the mounting holes get drilled on the end. And these guys are going to have uh, threaded studs pressed into them. So they are drilled undersize and then uh, reamed to uh, 250 thou because I have some 251 thou uh, drill rod that uh, is going to get pressed into these holes to form the studs. And uh, later on, I actually ended up adding a second pair of holes inboard of this one because I decided these ones were actually too far away from the grinder wheel. Luckily, I had space to do that. All right, and over to the bench now, uh, using this little bench block that uh, my dad gave me, one of my favorite little tools. I can deburr those holes. And then deburr the slots with the Noga tool. Looking good, this part is pretty much done. Okay, now we're gonna move on to making those studs shown in the middle there in light green. And we need three of those, and they're gonna be made from quarter inch drill rod out of the junk pile. And uh, here's a little trick for uh, getting the most out of the uh, bore in your spindle for 
skinny material after chucking it in there. Just stuff a rag around it so that it doesn't flop around when the lathe spins. And uh, it's not only quieter, but it'll keep the drill rod from getting bent, from getting flopped around. All right, so we're gonna face off the end. Looking good. And then we're gonna mark out the uh, length of our stud and the length of the threaded area. Now the threaded area is quarter 20, but this is again 251 drill rod. And so uh, uh, I need to take off about four thousandths here, just skimming it because these threads are gonna be cut with a die. Uh, if you go to exactly 250, the major diameter uh, of, of a quarter 20 thread, you'll never get that die started, especially in tool steel like this. So I go five, maybe even 10 thou under sometimes uh, on a thread like this. All right, and speaking of thread dies, we're going to set up my shop made tailstock die holder here with my quarter 20 thread die. Peekaboo. And that guy goes on here and it just slides on that shaft and so it can pull itself down the work as you go. Saves you having to have three hands for cutting threads on the lathe like this. And because I cut that a few thou under the major diameter, it cuts very nicely. And those threads are looking mighty fine. And then we just have to part this guy off to length. And the shoulder area there is what's going to get pressed into the steel plate. And it's also what the uh, mating surfaces ride on, which will all make more sense once we see how these go together. And after parting these guys off, I flip them around and face the ends off. Okay, next we're going to make this uh, riser part shown here in orange, also from quarter inch steel plate. And this is a much simpler profile, so I don't need to mess with the, uh, the paper and the glue. Just cut it straight out in the bandsaw. And once again, seat this guy into the mill so we can clean up those edges. And once again, using a four fluid end mill here. Now on the weirdly shaped part, the edges were cleaned up with a file. I decided to use the mill this time because yeah, milling is fun. It's looking good. Okay, now we're going to uh, do some layout here. I'm not going to bother with the DRO for this part because it's so simple and none of the dimensions are critical. So I'm just doing old school layout here to mark the ends of the slot that we're going to cut in this part. And you just find the center by feel of those marks and center punch each end. And while I have those center punches before I drill anything, I'm going to take advantage of it to mark the radii with the dividers so that I can uh, file that radius later. And then we'll set ourselves back up in the mill again to cut that slot down the middle. Nice and tight and tappy tap tap. All right, so we're going to throw the drill chuck there into the mill now and start by center drilling out the uh, the pivot point for the platen at the top and then once again we're going to drill a series of holes to make milling out this slot much quicker so once again just drilling a bunch of pilot holes on i think a uh, hundred thou centers or something like that basically you want to do this so that the, uh, the drilled holes will just about touch each other Remove as much material as you can without the drill bit wandering into adjacent holes as it goes. All right, and then we drill out all those holes. I try to work this out so that there's just wisps of material between each hole, so that the drill, each drill, tracks straight, uh, but then you don't really have any real material to mill out between them. And this slot is going to be for uh, those quarter 20 studs that we made. So uh, this guy is going to be milled in a single pass with a quarter inch uh, end mill, which will uh, 
automatically give me a couple thou of, uh, of free running uh, clearance there because the quarter 20, when used in a single pass to cut a slot, it's going to cut the slot slightly oversize. And then that pivot point, once again, needs to be uh, drilled and reamed to 250 for a light press fit on the 251 stud that's going to go in there. So I'm reaming that to 251. I'm uh, sorry, to 250. And as usual, the hole is drilled uh, 164th undersize and then brought to final dimension with a reamer, which is a, uh, a precise dimensioning instrument, unlike a drill. And then with our four flute quarter inch end mill, we can just plunge into one end of our slot and then unleash the power feed and mow down those holes. Once again, this is pretty easy going, even in, uh, even in an eighth inch steel plate with my little mill because the drill has done all the work. So really all this uh, mill is doing is basically dimensioning. Although those are a lot of chips for some dimensioning. And I actually ended up doing a, a spring pass as well because uh, it uh, helped clean up that surface finish a little bit and uh, made for a nicer, uh, a smoother running fit on, uh, on our pins. So two of those threaded studs that we made are going to go in here. So just doing a quick test fit and those are going to slide really, really nice in there. And once again, back to the bench to deburr these parts. Using the Nova tool on the slot and the chamfering tool on the hole. All right, so now we can do a test fit on the bench grinder using these little clamps because I want to know how my plate is going to line up. So I again printed that out one to one. Just got to make sure that the horizontal alignment is going to work out because that's the hardest part to get right. It's very difficult to model something complex like this grinder in CAD and uh, it looked like it is going to work out perfectly as I hoped. So now we can go back and uh, round off the ends of this uh, riser piece using the same technique as we did before. All right, so that is a great start on our improved grinder rest. We've got the mounting brackets and three studs, and that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.